Hello there, Mr. Wilson here again for what is part two of going through this November 2021 A-Level Maths Paper 3 by AQA. Now, if you haven't already, definitely check out um, the previous part because we uh, finished the multiple choice questions and we had we had a go at question four. So in this part, we're going to start on question five. So this looks like a nice little problem solving question. A gardener is creating flower beds in the shape of sectors of circles. The gardener uses an edging strip around the perimeter of each flower of the each of the flower beds. The cost of the edging strip is one pound eighty per meter and can be purchased for any length. One of the flower beds has a radius of five meters and an angle at the center of zero point seven radians, as shown in the diagram below. Find the area of the flower bed. Well, when you when you're given a sector of circle and you have the um, the, the angle in radians there is a formula given for this so the area is equal to um, a half r squared theta where theta is the angle given in radians and r is the radius so the area is just a half times 5 squared times 0 0.7 which if you just type that in the calculator will give you 8. 75 meters squared so just a nice little recall fact about um, area of a, uh, a sector find the cost of uh, the edging strip required for the flower bed well remember the edging strip is going to go around the edge around the perimeter so we need the perimeter of this flower bed well the arc length so the curved part of the uh, sector is defined by the formula um, r theta where theta is the um, uh, the angle given radians and r is the radius so this is going to be just 5 times 0 0.7 isn't it right so 5 times 0 0.7 that's going to give us 3.5 however we also need to add on the the uh, the two straight sides here and here for the total perimeter so it's two five meter lengths there so to get the total perimeter I need to do 3.5 plus two lots of five which is going to give me 13.5 meters so that's the perimeter so the cost well it's one pound 80 a meter so I do this distance 13.5 uh, meters times one pound eighty so thirteen point five times one pound eighty and that's going to give me twenty four pound thirty for my final answer there so a nice little cost question again a recall of a fact to find the cost but overall a nice little part there okay a flower bed is made it, is uh, to be made with an area of 20 meters squared show that the cost c of the edging strip required for this flower bed is given by the formula c is equal to 18 over 5 brackets 20 over r plus r okay an interesting idea well as we discussed earlier the perimeter is the arc length which you know is r theta plus two lots of the radius the two straight sides there well, we know that the uh, area is 20 metres squared, right? And we know that the area formula is a half r squared theta. And we know that this is equal to 20. Okay, so we can actually work out what theta is in terms of r because this is going to be the cost, isn't it? Kind of, because we're going to multiply the perimeter by the cost per metre. So if we can sub out theta, because our formula only has r in it, so if we can sub out theta, then we can uh, try and make a formula with just r in it. Well, using the area formula, we know that a half r squared theta equals 20. So r squared theta must equal 40, because you times both sides by 2. Uh, so theta must equal 40 over r squared, like so. So then we now know what theta is. We can now plug that into the other formula to get just a uh, just a, a perimeter in terms of r. So perimeter is equal to r times 40 over r squared plus two lots of r. 
So a perimeter is equal to 40 over r, because r time over r squared is just r on the bottom, plus two lots of r. That's the perimeter, so then we need to multiply that by the, the cost, right? So the cost of the... Um, the 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 edging is one pound eighty per meter. So this is the perimeter. So I just need to time by one pound eighty. Now one pound eighty as a fraction, because that's kind of what we're working with here, is nine over five. So the cost is nine over five brackets forty over r plus two lots of r. So we're getting pretty close to what they want, but they've pulled out a factor of two, haven't they? If you look, because the the thing inside the bracket is half what ours is. So they've pulled two out as a factor. So we can do the same. So cost is equal to nine over five times two lots of 40, um, 20 over R plus R. And so nine fifths times two cost is going to be 18 over five brackets, 20 over R plus R, which is as shown because that is exactly if we look up, that is exactly what they have as their formula there. So a nice little cost question there. Basically realising that you have to swap out theta um, from the formula, because it doesn't have theta in it, so you need to swap it out for just R, uh, something that's got R in it, and rearrange, do a little bit of factorising, and, and you've got your uh, answer there. So, yeah, nice little, uh, little part there. I assume we're going to use this cost formula now for something. So let's have a little uh, little look. So the second part then says, hence show that the minimum cost of the edging strip for this flower bed occurs when R is approximately equal to 4.5. Fully justify your answer. Now, as I'm reading this question, I'm immediately drawn to this minimum cost. That to me is talking about a minimum point, right? So this to me is also talking about differentiation. So let me just flick back because I'm almost certainly going to need this formula here. So let me just try and copy this over. Uh, copy to the next page. There we are. So, what we can actually do is we can differentiate this, um, this thing here to work out a formula um, to, to then work out the minimum value, the minimum point, so to speak. So basically, well, first of all, I'm going to expand the brackets because then it's going to be easy to differentiate, isn't it? So the cost is going to be equal to um, 18 times 20 is 360. So it's going to be 360 divided by 5. So that's going to be 72 over R plus 18... Um, r over 5 like that so we get this when we expand the brackets um now you can actually put the r on the on the side you don't have to put it on the numerator i mean it's can if you want to it doesn't really change the answer then we need to differentiate because minimum cost minimum points stationary points gradient that's the lo leap of logic there so minimum minimum cost to me is stationary point well that then links to the gradient so to get the gradient, you have to differentiate. That was the kind of leap of logic that led me to this path. So I'm going to differentiate C with respect to R. So I times by the power and I take one off the power. So I get negative 72 over R squared plus 18 over 5. Because I um, this is basically this is the power of negative 1, isn't it? So when you times by the power, take one off the power, it goes to the power of negative 2. So it's over R squared. So we get this. Well, for it for this to be a minimum point, so for it to be a minimum, uh, dc by dr has got to equal zero. So negative seventy two over r squared plus eighteen over five has got to equal zero. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then we could do a little bit of uh, rearranging here, because you can say that seventy two over r squared is equal to eighteen over five. And then basically times uh, this by 5. So 72 times 5. So 360 over r squared is equal to 18. So r squared is equal to 360 divided by 18. 
so r squared da, 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 r squared is equal to 20 so r must be equal to the square root of 20 so r must be equal to look at my calculator 4.4721 now, if we look look up, it tells us that r is approximately equal to 4.5. Well, this is approximately equal to 4.5. So you might actually think at this point here that we're finished with the question. But in actual fact, we have not shown it's a minimum value. It says shown that it's a minimum cost. We've shown that it's a stationary point, but for all we know, it could be that r is the maximum cost. And what we've actually found there with the 4.5 is the maximum cost. Now, this won't... This isn't really usual when you've only got one value. It's not massively usual for the the value that you find in a cost question to be the maximum. But there has been cases where it's been so. So we do need to show that this is a minimum point. We can't just leave it there. So to show something's a minimum point, you differentiate the function for a second time. So d2c by dr squared. Well, that's going to be times by the power. Take one off the power. So it's to be positive. Um, 144 over r cubed because the constant because the constant term is going to disappear isn't it so it's going to leave us with this and then we just need to sub in um, our value of r well r is the cube root of uh, the cube root the square root of 20 so d2c by dr squared when r is equal to the square root of 20 144 over uh, the square root of 20 cubed gives us um, well it's definitely going to be a positive value because there's no possible way you're ever going to get a negative value from this but I'll work it out anyway so I believe what you get from this is 1.6 so this is equal to well it's approximately equal to 1.6 which is greater than zero, so it has to be a minimum uh, minimum value as shown. So basically, it's shown that it's a minimum value. Well, it has to be a minimum value um, because it's uh, greater than zero. So if you differentiate a function for a second time and it is greater than zero, it must be a minimum, is the idea. So yeah, a nice little uh, little question there. I think a lot of students might get up to this point here, and then stop. But remember, if you are trying to show something to maximum or minimum, you've got to make that argument watertight. Literally, if you're asked to show it's a minimum, and you've not already shown that the second derivative shows you that, then you must show it. Because I believe that the mark scheme would only maybe give, I don't know, maybe four values maybe. Uh, four values, four marks for, for something like this, maybe three if they were being really harsh, if you didn't show that it was a minimum, even though you've done all the hard work to show that it's a stationary point in the first place. So yeah, a really, really interesting, um, interesting question there. Yeah, and that's the end of that part. So I know we've only done one question this part, but I, I am going to leave it there because I don't obviously want to go on uh, too long, and this question looks really... Uh, yeah, this question looks really interesting. I'll be keen to, to have a go at this question next. So if you've enjoyed this video, then definitely check out all the other videos on the channel. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And uh, all I want to say is thank you so much for watching. And I hope you have a fantastic day.